So today our adventure of my return to the United States of America begins. To fill in the gaps, if you don't know, I haven't been back to the United States of America in a number of years due to a global issue. And also I had two major knee surgeries. So this was my first trip back and I was doing it solo. And this is the story of my flight from Europe to the USA. However, I do want to caution you in this video that there is some very sensitive material coming up. I don't want to dramatize the whole thing, but I also don't want to mim miminize. I don't want to minimize it either. There was unpleasantness with non-consensual man to woman touching and I was the woman in question. It's not funny, I'm just, this is how I handle things. But if you feel an unpleasantness about watching that kind of thing, do skip this video. It's okay, there'll be lots more. Anyway, there was a whole lot of fun stuff that happened too and packing and getting ready to go was the beginning of it. Cherry's in a music video. Wow. Chewy, it's not gonna work, buddy. I can't bring you because it's a work trip. Is mommy's suitcase cozy? He's cozy. It's good to know. Good morning, or is it? I am exhausted. I only had one hour of sleep. I don't know about anybody else, but when I know I have a flight, I. Oops, it's dark. Uh, when I know I have a flight, I just can't sleep. Like, if, if I like my flight today is at nine, which means I have to leave for the airport at six, which means I have to be up at five, and I usually only fall asleep at two or three. So, like, no. So I fell asleep at like four, and I woke up at like five. So I'm um, real tired, but fingers crossed, sleeping on the plane. That's my whole plan. Spoiler: It very much does not work out that way. I'm gonna be on a flight for, first of all, I have to fly to Madrid and then I have to fly to LAX. So I'm hoping on the flight to LAX, I just sleep. It's gonna be 15 hours travel time total, not counting having to be at the airport early and all that shit. It's a long flight. <laughs> Does anyone remember my creepy teddy? Other people find him creepy, I love him. This is Ted. Um, usually he stays with mom and dad, but uh, I forgot, so we're gonna put him in a safe place. I love you. Goodbye. Good. Meep. Hello. I'm in the airport. Um, just checked in. Did all that horrible stuff. I hate queuing. I know. I'm going to California, which is like the most queuingy place ever. But um, here we are. While I was in the queue, I was actually pondering something which we've touched upon before on the channel, which is how you can spot Americans so easily. And like, I don't know what it is because I was like trying to analyze why I could tell. The, now, obviously, I was in a queue to Madrid as a stopover to LA. So like the people in my queue were gonna be, but you could easily spot the Americans from the Europeans, like no problem. So I was like trying to figure out what it is that makes it so easy to spot. And like, there's the obvious thing. One thing I noticed is the stance of people. Americans try to sort of make yourselves smaller, which I know sounds like contrary to what you would think about Americans. like. They're so loud and out there, but that like not the case. Like all the Americans stand with their hands in front of them, and like I don't know, they just like seem to make them want make. They seemed to want to make themselves look smaller. When they were in a group, they were all wearing t-shirts. Some of them had polo shirts. Some of them had just round neck t-shirts. But like nobody had anything really aside from that. And I like to be comfortable when I travel, so like that explains that. Baseball caps, yes, absolutely. Multi-ethnic, so like in a group of people, there'll be like a lot of different ethnicities. Um, whereas in Europe, I think a lot of times, one group, one ethnicity, generally speaking, generalizations, people, generalizations. Um, branding, Americans wear a lot of branding. And a lot of the branding is stuff that we don't recognize. So that's like an easy identifier, like logos for sports teams and stuff. Shorts, Europeans wear shorts, obviously. But Americans wear like baggy shorts that go over the knee. I don't see a lot of Europeans wearing that like sometimes you'll see them wearing 
um, like jean shorts or like capri pants but or cargo shorts but like I don't know what the, the fabric of the baggy shorts Americans wear is but I don't see a lot of European people wearing it accessories you guys like your accessories like, the American groups had so many accessories. They had thermoses, they had special sleeping pillows. Um, they just had like a lot of gadgets with them. Oh, a lot of them had two bags. So they'd have like a bag on their back, their backpack, and then a bag on their front as well. And that could be explained because it's like a long haul flight, but I didn't see any Europeans doing it. Big smiles. <laughs> Americans just smile so big, but like, some, like, like generally speaking, I know I'm saying generally speaking a lot, but you guys smile with like, both both your teeth probably because you have such nice teeth but you smile with like both of your both of your teeth oh yeah and like every american is wearing trainers or crocs like i didn't see anybody wearing any different types of shoes today anyway in this set in this small cross section of society i'll keep my eyes peeled for more And we have another one to tick off the happens every time list. Random security check. I honestly think every time I go to the airport, I get random security check. I think my theory on it is I always get random security checked because they obviously have a quota um, of like different types of people they have to check. And I think I like meet a lot of the criteria of like a quotient of people that they have to security check. It's annoying though, as an anxious traveler, it's annoying. So this brings us to the story. I got on the flight and I had already booked myself a window seat. I paid like, I think $70 or something extra for this particular seat because it was kind of in the middle of the plane. And I like a window because you know, you can fall asleep by the window, it's good. So when I was getting on the plane, like everybody else, I was feeling a little anxious going, oh my gosh, am I gonna get a place above my head for my bag? God forbid you don't. And I noticed as I was getting on that there were two people, I presumed a couple, sitting in the two seats beside where I was gonna go into. So I went, hello. I'm not perky. And the woman greeted me with, oh no, lovely. So I said, oh, I'm not that bad, am I? And she just rolled her eyes. So I was geared up for 12 hours of fun with them. So I put my bag up and I went to get into my seat and they made a really big freaking deal, particularly the woman about me getting into the seat. They had to move out of the way, obviously. They were like a middle-aged couple. So, you know, that's part and parcel of you've booked a middle seat and an aisle seat and not a window seat you're gonna have to stand up if the person needs to get into their seat and presumably during the course of a 12-hour flight they're gonna need to get up once or twice but anyway i got in it was a bit awkward at this stage and i sat in my seat and she started saying to the guy and the row next to her oh my god poor i'd love to say i remember the dude's name i don't they just weren't that important to me at this time i was planning on putting in my headphones and just ignoring them for the rest of the flight but she was saying, we'll call him Larry for the sake of it. Oh, poor Larry. He's just absolutely squashed. Well, Larry, as a larger gentleman, maybe should have booked himself a window seat with you in the middle seat, perhaps. I don't know. That would be my logic. But, you know, it's not something that I was having to deal with in that moment. So I was like, not apologetic. Uh, I've got my window seat here and I'm not doing anything wrong. Larry is taking up the two armrests and I'm like, fair enough, middle seat, you get two armrests. But he was also coming from the armrest into my seat, if you get me. His whole arm was lapping into. So I kind of started playing the shovey game and I was veering to the window side, the wall side anyway. And I was making some allowances for the fact that Larry was the larger gentleman. So if he splayed a bit, fine, but elbows, nah, nah, we're not doing that. Well, boarding the flight became a bit of an issue because apparently there was some problem with something to do with the 
phalange. The left phalange. There's no phalange. I don't know, it was something to do with the air conditioning. There was no air coming into the plane. Like there was the air that existed in the plane on the runway, but there was no air and it was hot. Some people were getting frustrated. And I turned to Larry and I said, oh Jesus, it's very hot, isn't it? And he just kind of went, hmm. All right, me and Larry are not gonna be best buds. Cool. Poor Larry, oh, it's so hot, he can't even breathe. And she's like fanning a piece of paper. I was fanning myself about the piece of paper, but I was being careful not to fan anybody else. You're wafting Larry's aroma in my direction. Contain the fanning, not fanning. That's beside the point. This is what we deal with when we agree to pack ourselves into a can of sardines. Oh, I've always been a private jet girl myself. Anyway, the flight takes off, everything's okay. Not the funnest, but I'm thinking I'll deal with it. You know, I'm just gonna fall asleep, headphones in against the wall. Well, Larry falls asleep first and Larry, it seems, is quite handsy in his sleep. So at first we're gonna say this is my leg and this is Larry's hand. Larry is like, his hand is here touching my leg. I don't really like strangers touching me at all. So I moved over a little bit and he also moved into my space more. Now Larry, apparently has maybe some kind of sleep apnea, I'm guessing, not to be diagnosing people, but he was breathing a bit strangely. And Larry proceeds to unfold his hand and put it on my leg. So at this point, I take Larry's hand, shove it over, and it flops back down. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt and thinking he's asleep. Probably. This doesn't even wake Larry up. I'm a light sleeper, so I'm like, okay, Larry's a heavy sleeper. Mm. But then his hand proceeds to unfurl onto my leg again. And at this point, I tried to gently wake him up. He was not waking up. He's a heavy sleeper, apparently. So then I start to tap him more. And at this point, the people in the row across are looking and the lady had kind of been talking to them. So I'm like, do you know these people? They were like, no, they could see I was having a situation. Thanks for the help there, guys. Honestly though, would I intervene? I don't know. At this point, I'm shaking Larry. Your hand is on my leg. And he's like, oh no. He looked at me like I was being an inconvenience. At this point, I'm thinking when the fasten seatbelt sign comes off, I'm definitely going to get up and ask to move to a different seat. So Larry falls asleep again and again on my leg. Hey Larry, I'm kind of starting to think this isn't an accident anymore. But who can say? Wake him up again, you're touching my leg. Oh. And this goes on two more times. So then I nudge Larry and I say, I wanna get up. Fasten seatbelt sign is off, I wanna get up. And his wife goes, ah, he goes, can we get you something? I went, no, I wanna wash my hands. I'm not in this for confrontation, see? So she goes, ah, oh, again. like. This woman, what is her problem? Maybe it's her creepy Larry husband man, I don't know. But I do feel like maybe it goes deeper than that. She's got her own stuff. So I went to get up, she stood up, he stood up, fastened seatbelt sign came back on. I'm like, oh Jesus. So I said, well, we'll have to wait. The fastened seatbelt sign is back on. So everybody sits back down again, she's like, ah. Oh. So they sit back down, they fall asleep in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Larry's at it again with the old hand. At this point, I'd had enough. I was like, I don't care if the fastened seatbelt sign is on. I'm getting up. So I told them I wanna get up again. She went, oh, for God's sake. I'm entitled to stand up. I'm allowed to stand up. Larry is not moving out of the way. And he goes, like I'm supposed to, Larry is in very close contact with the seat in front of him. Where am I supposed to go, Larry? And I said, I can't get out that way. He goes, well, just, just scooch across. I said, no, Larry. I didn't say Larry, cause that wasn't his name. No, I'd be giving you a lap dance then. I'm thinking maybe this is part of Larry's plan. She goes, oh, you'll have to just get out. So I went up and I found the main steward and I, he was behind the curtain kind of area and I kind of went in behind him. I did not want to make a scene here. And I'd written it out in Spanish on my phone, what I wanted to say, because a lot of the people on Iberia don't necessarily speak great English and it wasn't like a run of the mill situation that they'd encounter every day. So he read it and he was like, 
Okay, I will talk to him. I went, no, that's not what I want. That's a terrible idea. I do not want to have a conversation with the man and then have to sit next to him for like the next 11 hours. I said, I just want to move to a different seat. He found me the worst seat, like the worst seat. But at least it wasn't next to Larry. It was at the very back of the plane where all the germs go. It's freezing, it's the, it's the worst seat. But I was like, not next to Larry anymore. That was the end of it. Nobody checked up on me. I was a little shook up about the whole thing. And then I could not get asleep. Like it was not happening. not a pleasant flight to say the least. I have contacted Iberia about it over a week ago. They have yet to write back to me. I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but I do feel like the airline could have handled the situation better. And maybe if I was a, a better human being, I would have confronted the couple about the situation and taken them on and done a fight for justice. But to be honest, I just didn't want to expel my limited time and energy on them on this trip that I was super looking forward to. So I chose not to. I don't feel like people like that deserve your time and energy and you're not gonna change them. Maybe you feel differently, but it was me in this situation. So after that, I got to stand in the queue for customs for two and a half hours, it's half. And then I got my suitcase and I went to the hotel, which is a story for a whole other day. <coughs> there was a lot of stories out of this trip. I think I made three times as many videos as I have on any other trip. If you like the format of this video, you might want to check out patreon.com slash Diane Jennings. We do more kind of personal vloggy things there sometimes. Shout out today to a couple of very cool people. Our first shout out comes from Iceman. He wants to salute all of the fighters of wildfires and sends thoughts to all those who are having to deal with them, both in the USA and in Canada. Thank you so much, Iceman. Our second shout out is a repeat from Jason Moyer, but he says it's still very appropriate. He wants to shout out Willis Haveland Carrier, the designer of the first modern air conditioning system. He feels it's a requirement during this time of year, especially in the Southern region of the USA. Jason says you're an American hero, Mr. Carrier. Thank you so much, Jason. That's it for today. See you guys in the side. Bye.